Hey guys, welcome back to Stintech Space Rescue. Welcome back to the facility. This episode, we're going to plonk down, I reckon, the smeltery inside this forge building. It's going to be pretty cool. And we can start making some cool tools with some exotic ores that we've obtained from the mining with Thor the Mighty Hammer. But also, what we're going to have to do this episode is, I think, worry about power because I want to get the means to make my rocket. I need a compressor to start making circuits and to start turning steel into steel plates and things. So we're gonna jump in, first things first, the smeltery, and then we'll think about how we're gonna get some power and some machines. Okay, now what we're gonna need inside the smeltery before we start crafting the actual smeltery is we're gonna need a whole bunch of chests to hold all of the ores and metals that we create here. Because not only is this place gonna create cool tools for us, but it's also gonna be a great place to process all the ores that we get down in the mine and turn them into actual metal bars. So I'll make a crafting bench quick. And it's always handy to have a crafting bench lying around in different buildings. Just in case you need it here and there. Now the lights down here are just thrown down torches to make sure that- Oh! Oh no! Oh man! I thought the green at the door was actually a creeper inside the building. Whew! Close one. I need to make some chests here. And there we go. Three double chests should be plenty to store ores in. And if we put three double chests over this side as well... Oh, I've run out. It's okay. Get some more wood. Oh no, I've only got enough for one more chest. But there we go. Now two chests this side for metals. So once the ore has been processed into smeltery over here, it can be turned into metal and put in these chests. The metal bars. Or even metal blocks. Right, so now it's time to go out, because I don't think I've got enough grout. I haven't- I foolishly turned all of my seared bricks into actual, um, into the wrong thing, into seared blocks. So what I need to go, do now is go out with my trusty spade. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do is, I'll make an excavator to go out and get gravel, sand, and clay to turn into seared bricks and grout and get all that good stuff going. Now, you guys mentioned that I can just repair these hammers, but the truth is, these are kind of crummy- crummy stone hammers. Now I'm going to keep Thor out of respect because he was a mighty warrior that served as well, but we don't need these other hammers anymore, so I'm just going to throw away this broken hammer here, Thor 2. Don't need you anymore, my friend. And now I'm going to go and create an excavator to start getting all of that lovely, lovely sand, gravel and clay. Select Excavator, put in the tough binding, the tough rod, the excavator head, and the plate. Oh yeah, and there we go, we're going to call him Loki, Thor's brother, and Stonebound, sweet. Now I'll just plonk him in my bar, like this, and now it's time to go and excavate some more sand, gravel, and clay. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go through the different materials you can use for different tools and different parts, and tell you exactly what the different properties of these alloys and materials are so that we can get a better picture, a better, a better idea of what we want to use to make our tools. So what else can we do with a smeltery? Well, we can combine the metals we get to create alloys. Here's a list of all the alloys we can currently create in Galactic Craft. We've got aluminum brass here, which is a mix of aluminum and copper. We've got bronze, which is copper and tin. Alumite, which is aluminium, iron, and obsidian, and maniolin, I think that is, which is cobalt and ardite. Now, where do you get cobalt and ardite from? We haven't seen them in the overworld, and that's because they're in the underworld. They're in the nether. So we'll have to go into the nether to get some ardite and some cobalt so we can make some maniolin, because that's an end game alloy that's super effective when we make tools and weapons out of it. So these alloys are great materials to make tool parts out of, and each has an effect on how efficient, durable, or powerful the tool or weapon will be. Also, it's worth remembering that you can add a modifier to a tool or weapon, simply put the tool back into the forge, and uh, add a different material to improve the tool in different ways. For example, adding redstone to a tool will improve the mining speed, adding diamond will improve the durability, and adding a mossy slime ball will make it auto-repair. There are a whole bunch of extra modifiers you can add to them, so check it out. It can be really fun trying to work out what the perfect combination is for you and your tools. Okay, two down and one to go. I've got a whole bunch of clay, a stack and a half, and I've got four stacks of sand, pretty much. Now I've got to get the clay, and the best place to find clay is underground, so I'm going to dig deep into my mine and see if I can collect some more gravel 
from uh, from being underground in the mine. Oh wow, you guys were right. I can't eat blue slime and it replenishes one bar of hunger every ball. Okay, sweet. If I can find a way to farm slimes and I've got a pretty good idea of how I'm going to do that, then I can get infinite food with very little problems. Oh man, there's no gravel down here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go poking around the crag, the crag biome, see if I can find some gravel in there. Oh, gravel! Oh, sweet. Okay, excavator time. Here we go. Come on, Loki. Get me this gravel. Oh, all the gravel. Holy crap, this is so quick. Oh, man, but Loki was, Loki is almost broke. Loki? More like brokey. Oh, and he is broke. Oh, no! But it's okay. I've got, like, a whole stack of gravel. I'm going to throw away some basalt. And probably this feather or two to pick up the rest. But it's okay, I've probably got enough now. A stack of gravel is probably plenty. Blam! Exactly two stacks of ground. That should be plenty to make us all the seared bricks we're going to need. And also, we've got a bunch of sand left over to make the glass blocks we'll need for our Slime Island project. Okay, sweet. So let's get smelting that up. Now, oh, hang on a sec. I could probably use some more furnaces to smelt all of this stuff up. So I'm just going to make a few more furnaces. Now I'll keep the slime on me actually so I can keep uh, keep well fed. Slime seems like the perfect food. It stacks quite high. It's got multiple uses and um, and yeah. It replenishes only one hunger bar per slime ball but you get so many that that doesn't matter. Now let me tell you my plan for Slime Island. Oh, oh, skeleton. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this dude. Hopefully get a bow or some cool bones or something. Come here, yo. Down you go. I've got a bone and an arrow. Nice. A bone and an arrow. Ooh, almost a bow and arrow, but uh, not quite. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep. Skip the night. Right, here we go. Another fine morning at the facility. The zombies are burning. The monsters are dying. It's all great. It's all fantastic. Just going to finish you off. With your one, two. There you go, my friend. Oh, creeper. Let's take you out, too. I'm feeling lucky. Feeling frisky. Nice. And creepers don't blow up stuff in this mod pack, which is super useful because they could potentially just destroy all of our stuff. Now, Slime Island is up there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out a hole in the middle and build a big glass chute that will lead all the way down to the floor. Now, what the slimes are going to do is they're going to jump into the glass chute, fall down into the middle, and be trapped in a cage at the bottom. And then once they're in the cage at the bottom, I can develop a way to kill them, maybe with like a laser turret, and then collect all the slime balls that they drop. But for now, it's time to check on the grout to see how many seared bricks we've got and to start making our smeltery. Oh, I'm pretty excited for this. Oh, and some glass here at the end. Right. So what blocks do we need to make the smeltery? Let's take a look. For the smeltery, we're going to need a controller. Yes, we're going to need a drain. Now, how do you make these things? Let's do it step by step. Now, where did I put the seared brick? Must be around here somewhere. There it is. 29 seared bricks. Perfect. Now, we're going to need... Step one, a smeltery controller. And that is seared bricks around the edge. We only need one of these, so let's just grab that out of there. Right. So what do we need next? Next we need a drain. Now we might need a couple of these, but for starters I'm just going to make one. Oh. And there we go, a drain. Sweet. Now, what else do we need? Let's see. Here we are. This is what I need, right? A seared tank. How do you make that? Oh, glass. Now, it's a good thing we cooked up that glass. I'll just grab some of that. Perfect. And that was seared brick around the edge. Kablam. Now, I also need... Let's see. That's right, we need a casting table to make the molds and a casting basin 
to drain out some of the ore. Okay. So a table is just, well, a, 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 a kind of an upside down U shape. And a casting basin is a U shape. Okay, great. Well, that's easy enough. So we'll go like that for the basin. And like this for the table. Sweet. Now, how many? I've got loads of seared bricks left. What else can I make? Now, one thing you can do with a smeltery is you can drain the ore out. You can drain the molten metal out into a tank, separate tank. Now, what that does is, well, it lets you hold um, metal in its liquid form. But beyond that, there's no real reason to do it. Now, what are we also going to need? We're also going to need a casting channel. Now, what the channel does is it filters the ore and lets it run along the pipe into the uh, into the into the tank. Now, how do you? Let's see. Casting channel. Let's see. There we go. Now, how do you make this? Oh, it's just a, it's just a smaller U, like a boat shape. We can do that. Like so. Oh, and you make four of those. Nice. Now, we also need a tap, uh, a faucet, it's called. And to make that, again, oh, it's just a V. It's an easy made V. Now, we're going to need two of these. And thinking about it, actually, we're also, oh, we're going to need three. Sorry, we need one for the casting table, one for the casting basin, and one for the tanks. Now, we're also going to need an extra, where is it? Drain. And the drain was, let's see if we can remember. Oh, that's right. Three and three. And there we go. We should have everything we need now to make the smeltery. So let's get to it and show you how it's done. Right, so we'll put these seared bricks down here. Now, you need seared bricks, and I think you need seared bricks here, along the bottom, like this. It's got to have a, a three by three floor. And the smeltery itself has to be, I think, three by three. But you can keep adding levels to it as you go up to increase the capacity. Right, okay, so we have our 3x3 three three smeltery floor down. Now, you need a 3x3 three three area at the bottom for the bottom of the smeltery. Now, you need other important things around the sides. We've got seared tanks here. Uh, controller, that's what we need. The drain, all this stuff will come in handy and be very important. But we can put down the drain and casting basin later. What we need first is the seared tank to hold the lava. Lava is the fuel source for the smeltery. The controller, which is where you put the ores. Then we'll put seared bricks around the edge, like this. And it should become, there we go. The, the smeltery controller lights up when the forge is active. Right, so if you right click on this, you can see what you do. That's right, yeah. You put ores in here, so we could put, oh, let's say copper ore to start with. Let's just do that. And in it goes. Now you'll see nothing's happening to it because this tank is empty. There is no lava. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some buckets quick and go and get some lava so that we can get our forge smelting right from the start. Oh, running low on health. It's time for, I think, oh, watch out, slime. Actually, I'm going to kill this guy and get some snacks. Oh, yeah, slime balls. Perfect. You just literally right-click the, the tank with the bucket, the same way you would a normal tank, and blam. Oh, and you see what it's done? What it's done is it's put the copper ore into the main into the main bay. And oh yeah, look at these rich. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, don't want to burn. Now, look at this rich, rich brownie red. Oh, that's copper. That's copper right there. And what we'll see is this tank here fill up with orange goo once the copper is smelted. So let's get all the copper ore we can out of these chests and start by smelting up all the copper. Now I'm glad we got so much clay and sand and gravel because we're really probably gonna need it to build our cool, impressive smeltery. But it's worth thinking about the future now and we're gonna be smelting into casting basins and the casting table. So to get on top of that, I'm gonna put a casting basin over here and a casting table here. And we're gonna put, oh, we're gonna need another drain actually, that's right. So I'm just gonna create another drain, like this. Oh, we'll put two faucets here like this and complete with these seared bricks, another level on the smeltery. Oh yeah, look at that, oh, it looks like orange squash. 
Oh man, I just want to jump in. It's sunny delight. I just want to jump into this molten copper and, and go wild. Oh, drink it up. Oh, glug, 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 glug. Delicious. Oh, I'm taking hits. Oh no. Oh no. What's this? There's red stuff in there. Oh no, there's blood in there's blood in the furnace. Do you know why? Oh, oh, I know why this is. I sat in there, I burned myself on the molten copper, and now there's blood in the smeltery. Oh, that's disgusting. We're going to have to clean that up. There we go. Bam. Another level. And what this means is we can put even more ore in there. So let's just split up the copper again. Kablam, like so. And add more levels to the smeltery. Now, when you're draining out of a smeltery, it always takes from the controller the molten, the molten liquid that's at the bottom. And if we click on the blood, that moves the blood to the bottom of the smeltery. So we could pour out blood, although I'm not sure it actually works because blood's well, well, blood's blood. So if we put the copper at the bottom, I'll show you guys quickly what it looks like when we put it into the casting basin. Okay, so you right click here and oh yeah, look at that copper pour out into the casting basin. Delish. And when this cools, it should become a copper block. There we go. And I can put the block of copper over here in the chest. Kablam. Our first smeltery. Now, we haven't made any tools this episode. What we have done is pretty much completed the smeltery. What we're also going to do is, actually, you know, before we go, I'm going to put in the last piece of the puzzle. I'm going to add these extra seared tanks that I talked about so that we can make copper blocks a little bit more quickly. So instead of just having one casting basin on the side of the smeltery, we've got several, and each one of them making blocks of copper. Oh yeah, isn't that sweet? So what we'll do is next we'll drain this of all the copper blocks. We'll increase the tank capacity, have a little sunken bit here so that we can make a big tank that will filter out into three basins instead of just the one. And that lets us rapidly get all of the copper out of the forge. Right, so I've been Stjin, and this has been another episode of Stjintech Space Rescue. The facility is looking great. We've got our smeltering now. Next episode, we can look at alloys and making specific tools to make our job even easier, collect a lot more minerals and ores to mine and turn into metals. But also what we're going to do is we're going to build some wind turbines up on the hill, up on the mountain, up on the craggy bit, and, uh, and try and get some power. Also, I've been watching uh, Duncan's videos and I know where they live now. So we're going to make some sticky little traps for that tricksy little Kim and Duncan to fall into. I've got an idea for some spikes, some laser turrets. Oh, it's going to be glorious. And they're going to have so much fun running into my traps. So until next time, guys, take care.